Got to thank all of our 2015 sponsors, Aaron's Rent to Own, AR Bodies, Aluminum Racing Products, Bill's Professional Towing and Repair, Canopies R Us, EverageAuto.com, Everage Motor Sales, Jason Deach Collision and Customs, MR Performance, Napa Auto Parts, O'Reilly Auto Parts, Omnisource, Powers Automotive, Pro Motor, Ramada Hotel, RockAuto.com, Service Mechanical Incorporated, Shepherd's Family Auto Group, Trailer, Tires and Wheels.com, Tri State Wine X, Vores Welding and Steel, and the Wee Hop Restaurant. Here is your starting lineup for your six car dash. On the pole, driver the number 71, that's Harold Fair Jr. Starting outside of him from Plymouth, Indiana, the 25, that's going to be J.R. Rorig. Inside your second row, driver the number 24, it's the Rocket, Tyler Rorig. Outside of him, this gentleman calls Meco, Michigan home, the number five, Eric Lee. Jeff Canis. Inside your third row, driving the number 41 out of Auburn, Indiana, it's the Jack Attack, Brent Jack. Outside of him, your fast qualifier, the number 10. That's going to be Jack. Jack Landis. Six cars, six laps. Your early leader is the 71 of Fair Roaring. Gainus, Roaring, Landis, and Jack gonna bring him down, bring him around, one lap in. Five laps to go, five to go for Harold Fair Jr. Junior early race leader, running second, the 25 machine, J.R. Roaring, third, the five of Jeff Gainus. Tyler Roaring running fourth. Trent Jack looking to the inside of Landis for the fifth spot. Making it look easy is the Royal Truck and Trailer Service number 71. Driving that machine, that's Harold Fair Jr. He's pulling away from the field. Halfway up, halfway home. It's Fair, Rorig, Gainus, Rorig, Lannis, and Jack. Drivers opting for the lower line through turns one and two, the higher line through turns three and four. Now Jeff Gainus now starting to peek to the inside of the 25 machine. J.R. Rorig for the second spot. Gainis slips up a little bit, falls back in line in third. Landis going into one out of two, slipped up quite a bit. White flag is up, white flag is out. Harold Fair Jr. trying to win one early on tonight. Half a lap to go, Kyle. And he'll bring the field through turns three and four. Checkered flag out your winner, Harold Fair Jr. J.R. Rorick second, Jeff Gannis third. Tyler Roaring to fourth, Brent Jack to fifth, and rounding out your sixth car, your fast qualifier, the Bailey Trucking, number 10, Jack Landis. First winner of the night, Kyle, pretty exciting race. Guys starting to test the waters, want to know what groove is going to come into play a little bit later on as they get these Fusion Racing slicks geared up for 110 laps. Your six fastest cars coming up. Your pole setter driving the average motors. Number 63, welcome back, Rick. Average. Starting outside of him, driving the number 50 machine. That's going to be Brandon Barkas. Second row to the inside, the son of the 63. That's the 62 of Caston Everidge. Outside of him, driving the numbers, Six, driving the number two machine. That's going to be Mike Kugler. Inside the third row, second quick qualifier that each sales and service number seven. Out of Edgerton, Ohio, that's Jason Deach in the number seven. Starting scratch on the field, your fast qualifier from Fort Wayne, Indiana. It's Hollywood, Tommy Cook. Six cars getting ready to go. Angola Motorsport Safety Team giving the track the once over before we get going here. Keep your eye on the father-son team. You know, a very interesting three father-son teams here in attendance tonight. You've got the Everidge family here in the Shepherd Sportsman Division, the Jack family, and the Rorick family in the Stan Perry Memorial late models. Definitely really exciting to see the fathers and the sons. Of course, Barkas, he comes from a long line of racers. Excuse me, his dad, Tony, a seasoned veteran. Not racing tonight, but I'm sure he's pit side crew chiefing for the number 50. 
family, Kyle, is what the, sh the sport is all about. And it's definitely neat to see a lot of father and sons racing together. Yeah, you mentioned it being a family sport. Uh, I actually race with the GLS Mini Cups. My wife races against me. My son has a car in the garage. And what he forgot to mention is not only does his wife race against him, she also beats him on occasion. You're welcome, buddy. Hey, I tell you what, though, every now and then we get that one special race where we get a little too close and make for a very long car ride home. Definitely a good time, I am sure. The field is set and ready to go. Looks like we might be going to give him the one lap indicator. Hauser on the flag stand, Junior. Gonna give him a one to go. Ryman Castle, his assistant for the night. Average Barkus, Average Kugler, Deach, and Cook. Two by two by two. Six laps. It's gonna be the dash. Average and Barkus now gonna start to pick up the pace. Green flag is out. Here we go. Barkus gonna get the whole shot right away on Rick Everidge, but Rick Everidge back to the inside. Barkus trying the high line, Everidge to the low line. Here comes Kugler. Kugler on the outside on the move in the number two machine. Brandon Barkus to lead lap one. Now it's a battle for second between the 63 machine of Rick Everidge, the two of Mike Kugler. Kugler trying to go round the outside. Dive bombs to the outside of turns three and four. Bark is still able to be out front at large and in charge in the number 50 machine. Kugler, the Kugler crew special all over the outside. Barkus slides up a little bit. Nobody able to do much with him at this point. Still like they started nose to tail, door to door. Meanwhile, here comes the eight of Hollywood, Tommy Cook. Now looking to the outside of cast and average. Two by two battling for four, second through fifth. Two laps to go this time by, two to go for your leader. Barkus, he's in the Shepherds Automotive Group number 50. They are your presenting sponsor for the late model sportsman. He's trying to win one for the sponsor tonight. Looks like he's gonna have about a lap to go, but Kugler still working on Rick Everidge on the high line. Everidge and Kugler side by side. Kugler starting to edge him out. That time is a white flag's out. One lap to go for your leader, the 50 of Brandon Barkus. Kugler trying to reel him in, pedaling hard. He's on the loud pedal out of three and a four. Checkered flag is up, checkered flag is out. The number 50 machine, Tony Barkus, gonna go to victory lane. Kugler and Everidge round out your top three. Pretty exciting race there, these guys. Big, big crowd on hand. They want to win and impress each and every one of you. But he finds victory lane in his young racing career. His dad, legendary Tony Barkis, you can see where he gets it from. He's a hot shoe just like dad. He's coming to victory lane. Angola Motorsports Speedway, let's hear it for the Shepherds Automotive Group number 50. How about a hand for Brandon Barkis? Dash time for the AverageAuto.com's Modifieds. You saw him out here a little while ago, shaking down his outlaw lane model. Starting on the front row, the little 331. That's going to be Trey Dubal. Outside of him driving the number 16, that is going to be Aaron Timmerman. Inside the next row from Angola, Indiana, in the S&T Auto Body, number 10. That's going to be Eric Schaefer. Alongside him driving the number 70. Outside your second row, it's going to be Jeremy Wallen. Starting inside the next row, the 28th, that's gonna be Scott Coe. And alongside him, your fast qualifier said it's a brand new hot rod. First time on the track was just yesterday. That's Jason Timmerman. Six cars getting ready to go six laps. Yeah, I didn't think so. You see your flagman, he looks him over, he looks at him again and he just kinda dangles the green flag there. That's the signal to the drivers that, yeah, I probably didn't like that start. We're gonna try it again. The rule of thumb here at Angola is you need to be side by side, wheel to wheel. When you get to the white line, you see Hauser giving them the what for off the flag stand saying, come on guys, I know you know what's up. Trey and Aaron will get one more chance, Kyle, to make it a good start. That's right, you also got our two fastest qualifiers. 
28, Scott Cole, the nine, Jason Timmer, and see them kind of hanging back, want to take it easy, save the cars for tonight's big event. Big shout out to Ryan and Stephanie Powell and the kids for coming out tonight. Our tech official from South Bend is here. Green flag is up and out. We are racing. Dubal with another strong start, takes over the early lead. Timmerman looking to the outside, nothing doing as they go down the back stretch into turn three. Here comes a 70 machine though. Wallen looking to the outside in the 70. Now he's got the 10 of Eric Schaefer to the inside. Out front a little, 331 of Duval gonna be your leader. Trying to hold off Aaron Timmerman, Wallen. One, two, three, Schaefer, Co. and Timmerman round out your field. Halfway up, halfway home this time by three in with three, count them, three to go. Your early race leader, the 331 of Trey Dubal, fresh off his top speed modified win last week here at the Angola Motorsport Speedway. Running second, the 16 machine, Aaron Timmerman. He's got the 70, Jeremy Wallen all over his back bumper. Dubal gonna slip up a little bit. Timmerman looks to the inside. Something went flying off. You see it way up top. Not sure what it was, but it's up out of the groove. White flag is up, white flag is out. Timmerman all over the 331. Timmerman drops it down to the bottom, looks to the inside, coming out of two down the back stretch. Dubal with the momentum on the high side. Timmerman gonna try it one more time. Look into the bottom. Side by side, nothing. Doing your winner, the 331 of Trey Dubal. Pretty good storyline here for the little 331 of Dubal. He had issues early on in the Outlaw late model, was unable to qualify. We saw him come out in hot lap just a little bit ago. Pretty exciting, Kyle, to see him do double duty. Looks like he's gonna skip victory lane and go straight back to get ready for the main events. That's right, Duel doing double duty. Gonna jump back behind the wheel of his outlaw car. Come out for tonight's 110 laps. Stan Perry Memorial, he'll pull it into the infield. Sponsored by J.R. Neely, Home Improvements, and Duel Motorsports, the little 331 Trey Duel. comes your field as they come down and Gold Motorsports Speedway. Let's make some noise for your 18 starters. Let me hear ya. Here is your starting lineup. On the pole driving the number 71, that's Mark Mason. Starting outside of him, driving the number 85 machine. That's gonna be Steve Christmas. Everybody up on your Jeremy feet, Wallens. it's the wave lap. Everybody up, flip your big wave your hats, your hands, your hankies, say good luck, guys. And girls in good racing. Inside row number two, the 32 is Al Berry. Outside of him, driving the number 63, that's gonna be Rick Everidge. Third row inside the 50 of Brandon Barkus. Outside of him, the other Everidge, a 62 of Caston Everidge. Fourth row to the inside, the number two, it's the Kugler Crew Special of Mike Kugler. And starting outside him, driving the number seven, that's gonna be Jason Deach. Rolling off ninth, your fast qualifier, the number eight, that's Tommy Cook. Outside him in the zero machine from Granville, Indiana, that's gonna be Tony Dagger. The number 60 is John Gerhardt. The 53 machine, Eric Barkas. 28 of Todd Gerhardt. The eight machine, that's gonna be Hope Harnish. Here we go. Patrick Dent, Jason Timmerman. And Tanner Terry round out your field. We are side by side racing. Mark Mason with the early lead, the 71. But here comes the number 85 of Jeremy Wallen working the high line average to the low line. It's a three car battle for P1. Wallens now looks to the outside of Mason for the top spot. Here comes a 63 of average. Now dive into the bottom. Three way battle for the lead as they're almost three wide out of turn four. Holy son of a monkey, we're trading some paint, trading some paint around the high banks. Here comes the Deach Sales and Service number seven. Jason Deach gonna look to the high line. He's trying to make his move up on that 32 of Barry. Tommy Cook trapped deep in the field. Not able to make any kind of moves as the 85 Wallen side by side with the 71 of Mason. Average hoping somebody makes a mistake and he can fill a hole. 
Wallens to the outside of the 71 of Mark Mason for the top spot. Here comes a seven of Deitch. Deitch looks to the outside of Everidge for third. Side by side, two rows deep. Here comes a 32 machine of Al Berry. Now in the mix as well. On the last lap at the line, it was the 85 of Wallen, but Mason not giving up. Watch him at the line. Wallen's gonna edge him out by a bumper. Mark Mason back on the loud pedal. He's gonna push right up. He forces Wallen to the top shelf where Grandma keeps the cookies. Deep's gonna follow suit. Side by side battle for the lead. Mark Mason with a shorter line on the bottom. Wallens with the momentum on the outside. Still side by side. Now Deach looks to the inside as they go down the back stretch. Deach solidly up to the third spot in that seven machine. Father and son team cast and Rick Everidge working their way up. Holy son of a monkey. Deach put it three wide, thought better of it. Deach gonna look three wide again. Puts the bumper right to the back of the 71. Thinks better of it. Here comes Everidge. Everidge gonna get back in the mix. Put that Rick Everidge to P4. Three wide out of turn. For the top spot, Deach falls back in line. Mark Mason, still your leader in the 71. He's got the 85 top. Jeremy Wallens on the outside. It's gonna be Wallen, Mason, Deach, Everidge, Everidge, Barry, Barkus, Cook, Kugler, and Dagger, your front 10. Wallen, look at three wide again. Here it comes. Deach to the inside, Wallen to the outside. Jason thinks better of it. Jeremy fighting hard. Mason right down the middle, looking at three wide down the front straight away. Gonna give a lead to the 85 of Wallens. Mark Mason falls back to second. Now Deach to the inside. Side by side as they go through turns three and four. The 63, a Rick Everidge in the mix as well. Mark Mason started on the pole. He's gonna slide to P3. Jason Deach, he's looking to the inside of Wallen. A couple of veterans battling out on the front row. The Deach sales and service number seven. He's on the bottom of the track. Watch him at the line. Give the lead to Wallen by a bumper. Deach not gonna give up quite yet. He's back on the loud pedal. Door to door, down the back straightaway. Still side by side as the 85 Jeremy Wallen's getting comfortable with that high third groove around this 3 8 mile racetrack. Deach on the bottom trying to get by. Still side by side through turns one and two. Barry looks to the inside of Everett. Unable to make it move. Here comes your fast qualifier, Hollywood Tommy Cook. Cook already up to one about seventh place. Looking for more, but time is slowly running out, Kyle. These guys are gonna have to make a move and make it quick if they're gonna get anybody up there with Jason Deach. Halfway home this time, by for the seven of Jason Deach. Jeremy Wallens running second, Mark Mason running third as a 32 machine. Of Al Berry off the pace on the bottom of the speedway. He'll lose several positions. We haven't talked about it much tonight, but Tanner Terry has struggled with a ill-handling race car all day. He did pick up a heat win in the bicycle race. Barry around, Al Barry around right here on the start finish line. Did not see what happened, Kyle. All I saw was a cloud of smoke in the 32 going every which way but loose. Well, the 32, a lap ago, off the pace, way down on the bottom of the front stretch here, losing several positions. Ends up going around out of turn four, bringing out the caution flag. That gives us a chance to catch our breath a little bit. Wild, wild battle up front for the lead as Jason Deach starting to edge out the 85, Jeremy Wallens. We're gonna give him the white flag. One lap to go. Like I had mentioned, double file restarts. Not sure what the 85 is doing. There he goes. He had kind of laid back a little bit, kind of a jackrabbit start. Now he's going to go door to door. The field going to come to green this time, Kyle. Anything can happen. Keep your eyes on Tommy Cook. That's right. Deach and Wallen's going to bring the field out of turn four. Green flags out. Here we go. Side by side going into turns one and two. A little bit of contact between the 71 Mark Mason, the 63 of Rick Everett. Still side by side battle for the third spot as Mason looks to the inside of Wallens for second. Bump and run out of turn number three. Everybody trying to move up. Here comes Hollywood Tommy Cook. Cook to the inside of Everidge. Mason to the inside of Wallen. Everidge trying the high line. Tommy Cook to the low line. 
Cook gonna drive it in deep, unable to make an advancement on his spot so far. Jason Deeds, Wall, and Mason Everidge, and Cook, your front five contenders. Clear sailing for your leader to seven to Jason Deach. Jeremy Wallens now solidly in second. Battle for third between the 63 of Rick Everidge, the 71 of Mark Mason. Everidge now starting to go around the outside. He's up to the third spot. Here comes the eight of Tommy Cook. A little bit of smoke, a lot of brake usage out of the 71 of Mason. Keep your eye on that as that could become a factor later on. Jason Deach is checked out from your field. Jason Deach by 10, 15 car lengths. Here comes Everidge. Everidge got a run onto the inside of Wallen. Unable to make it stick, but Barkus onto the high line of Mason. Hope way out of shape in the number eight machine. Almost collected the outside retaining wall. 20 laps in, 10 laps to go that time by for your leader, the seven of Jason Deach. Battle for second between the 63 of Everidge, the 85 of Wallens. Everidge on the bottom slides up. Still side by side down the front stretch as Wallen fights back on the outside. I don't know where to run P3. Here comes Tommy Cook. Wallen may have used up the Hoosier Racing tires, trying to get up front and stay there. Everybody starting to get around him a little bit to the inside, but Jason Deach may have checked out from your field. Got a car sitting off the outside of the track up here. Cannot see who it is from our vantage point. Not sure what happened. It was right out of the the number 28 I think machine. That's a, yeah, I think it's a 28 of Gearhart. Mowing the lawn over there in turn four. Didn't see what happened, Kyle. I missed it. It was out of our viewpoint here in the scoring tower. But he's able to regain and get back on. Car looks OK. Maybe just a little bit of extra grass in the front splitter. But other than that, he's good to go or not. It looks like, boy, the pair of Gerhardt's, John Gerhardt in the 60, he's going to take it to pit road and follow right behind him. Todd Gerhardt, not a good night to be a Gerhardt. Both of them out early on here tonight. White flag being given, that means next time. We're gonna be on the loud pedal this time. Next time it's gonna be green flag racing. Deach, Everidge, Wallen, Cook, Barkus, Mason. Everidge, Dagger, Kugler, Barkus. Your top 10 contenders. Here they come out of three into four. Kyle's gonna bring you to green. Deach and Everidge side by side. A little bit of leaning as they cross the stripe. Still side by side and leaning in a turn one. Side by side, coming out of two down the back stretch. Deach gonna edge him out slightly. Everidge gonna fight back on the high side. Lots of trade and pain. Here comes Everidge with the sling nut. Everidge may return the favor that Deach gave him. Not gonna do it that lap as he slid up the track. They traded a lot of paint. You got some black paint on a red car and some red paint on a black car. But they kept it clean and green. Caution is out now. Tanner Terry around inside of turn two. Looked up Hope Hornish almost again into the outside retaining wall. Kyle, let me set this up. I tell you what, on that start, the seven and the 63 leaned on each other once, twice, about 10 times. 63 dove to the inside to get him back. It's gonna be a, another start like that. Could be very interesting. Makes it a little bit hard for Cook to decide what to do. He didn't want to get up there and race and take a chance if they were to crash to take himself out. So you saw him kind of lay low a little bit, let it play out. The excitement begins in about half a lap. Here we go, everybody's on the edge of their seat. Coming out of three into turn four. Hauser looks him up, looks them over. We are racing, they're already leaning on each other. Average gonna get pushed all the way to the wall. And caution light out on the back stretch, causing the field to jumble up. Chief starter not liking that start. Just a little bit too much contact between the leaders. Leaving the caution light on, letting them know, hey, I didn't care for that. We're going to try it again. He already gave him a warning. Now he's letting him know, guys, we're not going to push each other to the wall. You see him kind of exchanging little hand gestures out the window saying, let's race each other clean. These fans paid to see a good show. So Everidge and Deach going to talk to him a little bit. Once again, gonna get him the white flag. Try this one more time. 
Jason Deach in the 7, Rick Everidge in the 63, Jeremy Wallens in the 85, Tommy Cook in the car on the outside, the 8. Here they come side by side. They're beating and banging already. Deach going to run Everidge all the way to the wall. Everidge not liking that one bit. Deach pushed him way high, wide, and handsome, forced him to get on the brake, and that's going to give Jason Deach the lead. Deach has got the lead by several car lengths. Battles shaping up between the second place car of Everidge, the eight of Tommy Cook, and the 85 of Jeremy Wallens. Cook now up to third, sets his sights on that 63 average, looks to the outside, coming out of turn four. Mason and Barkus trading a lot of paint. You see the flagman giving them a warning as well. Trading a lot of paint in this one. Everybody getting kind of antsy. I believe we're coming to five laps to go. Five laps to go. Hauser shows him the signal. Five to go this time by. Caution is out. Caution. One, two, three, six cars involved. My math is very good. Six cars involved in the middle of one and two. The zero, Tony Dagger. The six, Patrick Dent. Looks like the eight of Hope Hornish. I believe the Looks 25 like of Cam Shack. He's looking at us the wrong way there on the inside. Hey, everybody give him a wave. <laughs> I believe Hornish stopped just to avoid the wreck, so. Don't believe anything's amiss with that car yet. Oh, no! P. Diddy got to back over. Hope ran her right over it. She's just sitting there minding her own business. Once again, five laps to go. Five laps for your leader, the seven adjacent Deach. The 63, Rick Average pulls up along the outside. We're going to give them plenty of room this time as they come out of turn four. Green flag is out. We're racing. Best restart of the night. Average going to push him way down below the line. Deach trying to hold the line. He's going to push Average all the way up to the top shelf where Grandma keeps the cookies. Everidge right onto his back bumper, looks to the low line. Here comes Everidge, Everidge to the inside. Tommy Cook waiting on a hole. Four laps to go. Tommy Cook now has his sights on the 63 of Rick Everidge, trying to get around him for the second spot. Meanwhile, your leader, the seven, Jason Deach, clear sailing out of turn four. Deach with a several car length advantage over the 63 of Rick Average. Tommy Cook trying to figure out a way around him in the A machine. Jeremy Wallace running fourth. Mark Mason running fifth. Brandon Barkus behind him in sixth. Battle for seventh between the 62 machine. Cast in Average. And the 50, 53 of Eric Barkus has a white flag out. One. To go for your leader, the seven of Jason Deach. He'll tiptoe it through turns three and four. Checkered flag out your winner, the seven, Jason Deach. Rick Everett, second. Tommy Cook, third. And I'm going to turn it over to trackside to Mr. Tony Eldridge. Tony. What an exciting race there in Gullah Motors for Speedway. What do you think about that one? Just getting warmed up for the main event. All right, going to get our Modifieds line back up. Your lineup's going to look like this. Starting on the pole, driving the number 10 machine. That's going to be Eric Schaefer. Alongside him, outside the front row, will be the 28 of Skako. Inside row number two, the 70. That's going to be Jeremy Wallen. And alongside him, the number nine machine. That's Jason Timmerman. Inside row number three, the 16. That's going to be Aaron Timmerman. With the little 3-3-1 of 
of Trey Newell. Inside the next row, the 47 machine, that's going to be Bud Adam. Alongside him, the 61 of Brad Springer. The 12 of Dave Nestor. Alongside him will be the 9, the Rome City Rocket of Dire One Wolf. 45, Robbie Henderson. Tricycle race winner, Scotty Moyer. The other 45 machine. Chad Poorman out there, Matt. Mel Klein and Mike Boofink. We're racing Schaefer to the early lead. Look at it, three wide. Holy son of a monkey, we're gonna do it in the modified. Green racetrack for these race cars. Rain washing off a little bit of rubber. Might affect the handling on these machines. Wallen gonna look to the inside of Coe. Coe trying to make a line around him. Scott Coe with the advantage in the 28. We'll move back to second. Wallen to third. Here comes your fast qualifier. Timmerman, he's high, wide, and handsome. Timmerman up to the fourth spot. Meanwhile, your leader continues to be the 10, Eric Schaefer. Coe running second. Wallen third. Fourth, Timmerman battle for fifth. Now between the 16, the other Timmerman and Trey Dubal in the 3-3-1. Three, three, Here comes the Rome City Rocket. Darwin Wolf inside of Brad Springer. Wolf trying to make his way to the front. Aaron Timmerman in the 16 machine. Now starting to feel the pressure from the 47 of Bud Adams. Adams trying to go around the outside, battling a little further back in the pack. Your leader is still Schaefer. Schaefer has led every single lap from the go. Driving the number 10, wouldn't it be something to see the number 10 go to victory on the 10th day of June for the number 10, the godfather. A lot of coincidences there as he tries to hold off Scott Coe and Jeremy Wallen. Darwin Wolf, he's still trying to work his way up, losing a little bit of momentum on the high line. The number 12 machine of Dave Nestor, the Burkett Nestor race cars entry. Trying to find a line to the inside, nothing to it. Meanwhile, your leader continues to be the 10, Eric Schaefer second. The 28 machine, Scott Cole third, the 70, Jeremy Wallen fourth, the nine of Jason Timmerman, your fast qualifier, battle for fifth, shaping up between the 3-3-1, Trey Dubal, the 40, 47 of Bud Adams. Schaefer, Co. one and two, Wallen to three, Timmerman to four, Dubal to five, pretty much single file now, Kyle. Everybody kind of sorting their way out. You see Henderson a little bit slideways coming out of two. That little bit of moisture may have really cleaned off the track here for the Modifieds. The 331, Trey Dubal starting to get a little racy. Look into the inside of your fast qualifier, the nine of Jason Timmerman. Dubal dies down to the bottom side by side, coming out of turn four, falls back in line. Schaefer checks out, now about six car lengths to go, six car lengths to Wallen, 10 car lengths to Timmerman. Dubal gonna try and work the 331 around the nine. He's gonna go to the inside. Dubal look into the low line. He has a lot of racing left to go, 110 laps as a matter of fact, once he climbs out of this machine into the outlaw car. Dubal getting a little sideways out of turn two, loses some ground to the nine of Timmerman. Meanwhile, three car breakaway, your leader, the 10, Eric Schaefer, the 28 machine, Scott Cohen, the 70 of Jeremy Wallen. Halfway up, halfway home, 15 in, 15 to go this time by in the 30 lapper. Boofink about to go a lap down to the front bumper of Eric Schaefer, Schaefer, Co. Wallen, Timmerman, Dubal, Adams, Z Timmerman, Springer. Nestor. <laughs> the 47 of Bud Adams now looking to the inside of the 3-3-1 of Trey Dubal as Dubal gets all sorts of squirrely through three and four. Adams looks to the inside. Dubal shuts the door. 
Adams once again on the bottom, side by side, coming out of two down the back stretch. Scott Kokyle slowly but surely casts the fishing line and starts to reel in the number 10 machine. Has Coe been saving the car for the end or a late race caution? Time is running short, but Coe is a man on a mission. Meanwhile, battle for fifth still between the 3-3-1 of Tubal, the 47 of Adams. Adams trying everything he can to get around that JR. Neely Home Improvements 331 machine of Dubal. They'll work around the 85 of Buffin. 10 laps to go for the number 10 of Eric Schaefer. Coe has pulled into three, four, five car lengths down the back straightaway. Coe much better through the turns than that of Schaefer, but Schaefer able to outmotor down the straightaway. Nine laps to go, Kyle. We're starting to get down to the nitty gritty. That's right, the 28 of Coe now starting to use that lower line, starting to reel in the 10 of Schaefer. Seco drops to the bottom, gains several car lengths through the corner. Schaefer with the momentum, gonna gain them back on the straightaway. Two car lengths coming out of two for the 2-8. Trying to reel him back in. I believe we've got about seven or eight laps to go in this one. Winding down, Co has reeled him in. 10 car length advantage down to a nose to tail situation. Co to the inside, Schaefer able to hold off. Schaefer now trying to hold back the 28 of Coe's. It's five laps to go. Five to go for the, excuse me, six laps to go for the 10 of Schaefer. Six laps to go, make it five this time by. Five to go for Schaefer, Coe, Wallen, Timmerman, Dubal Adams, Timmerman, Springer, Nestor, Rocket. Scott Coe all over the back bumper. The 10 of Eric Schaefer trying to get around him. Dives down to the bottom, falls back in line down the front stretch. As your leader's now starting to gain on the 31 machine, 34 machine, Mel Klein. Klein about to go a lap down. Three, I believe, three to go this time by. Winding him down, 10 of Schaefer, 28 of Coe. Here we go, white flag about to come onto the speedway, getting down to the wire. Flagman has the white flag in hand. It looks like next time by, we will get down to the nitty gritty. White flag gonna be high up in the air. Schaefer has lap traffic to contend to, but Co loses about a car length. Half a lap to go for Schaefer. Schaefer trying to hold him off. Co trying to reel him in. Checkered flag gonna be high in the sky over the number 10. Here comes Co. it's gonna be a drag race. Down to the wire, slideways three wide. Holy son of a monkey, we're gonna have to go to timing and scoring. I believe it was the number 10 car, but I'm not sure. Woo, that was a close one. Why we figure out who your winner is in Golden Motorsports Speedway, what do you think about the finish of that one? Here it is, your official report. He's going to victory lane, the number 10 of Eric Schaefer. Kyle Trinkline, you headed out a second too soon. We went three wide across the finish line with lap traffic. Schaefer by a bumper. We're gonna send it track side to Flipper. Well, ladies and gentlemen, he can hear you now. Picking up the feature win, the 10, Eric Schaefer. Schaefer gonna go shake hands with the 28 of Co. Oops, sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a nice round of applause for all these modified drivers putting on a whale of a show.
Eric, congratulations, man. That looked like one heck of a battle there at the end. Three wide, coming across the line with a lap car. I, I couldn't keep it on the bottom, and when I saw him waving the lap car to the top, I knew I was in trouble. Uh, I was mad at first, but I just told Scott I'd done the same thing. It was a good battle. Uh, hopefully, you guys liked watching that. Tell me, with the rain that we had and everything, how much did that track change for you guys? Did it get pretty slippery for you? It actually washed a lot of the track dry off, so <laughs> if we can get a, get a half hour rain break every once in a while, it'll be okay. All right, well, I know you got some people that help you out with this machine, man. Who do you want to thank? Oh, SNT Auto Body, uh, my parents. Uh, like I said before, my dad and Craig Fisher put a clip on this after we crashed last year. My niece is always over in the pits helping. My buddy Ryan. Oh, it's, it's good. We got a lot of people to help. All right, ladies and gentlemen, one more time, your winner, the 10, Eric Schaefer. Starting outside of him in the Fields Auto Parts, number 31. That's going to be Jeff Lane. The birthday boy owned McNally Motorsports, number 11. He is out of Hamilton, Indiana, ladies and gentlemen, flying for Ryan Nestor. Outside of him in the rush, trekking, machine ethics, amps, performance parts, thread lines, embroidery, patriotic, number 33. That's going to be Dave Stehauer. Up next out of Macomb, Michigan, the Aero Uniform Action Drywall, Lee Motorsports, number five out. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Eric Lee. Outside of him, from Hudson, Indiana, in the Parr Farms, EverageMotorsales.com, number nine. That's going to be Jeff Parr. Your next row, a couple of my local boys from my area, the number 95, the Triple L Motorsports. That's the number 95 of the noisy one, Steve Stacy. Outside of him, feature winner last Saturday, at the South Bend Motor Speedway from Goshen, Indiana. That's gonna be Charlie Hanna. Out back, you're looking here, Indiana driver of the Reeds. Use your horsepower, Reed Farms number 33. That's Steve Reed. Starting scratch on the field. Non-qualifier, you saw him earlier in the modifieds in the little three. 31, that's gonna be Trey Dubal. Everybody on your feet, it's the wave lap. Show him your cell phone, let him know you're excited to be here. Everybody up next time by. We're gonna turn him up, turn him loose for 110 green. Flag left on behalf of Pam Shelvin, I Andy Jack, and the entire staff and management of the Angola Motorsports Speedway. Thank you for coming out. Race fans, you better sit back. Hold on tight, because we're about to go full throttle. 22 of the baddest cars in the area. Come out of turn four on your feet. Here we go. The Perry family going to throw the green flag. Perry saluting the godfather. Here comes Hunter Jack. Clarity, Fair, and Van Dyke, your front five. One lap in with only 109 left to go. Hunter Jack to lead lap one. The veteran Hans falls back to second. Clarity starting to peek to the inside. He's got the 71. Harold Fair Jr. looking to the outside. Everybody going to sort it out. Here comes the doctor. The doctor going to work the highlight on the Van Dyke. Here comes the Constantine Comet. The Comet trying to follow the doctor through. It's still going to be Hunter Jack, Scott Hans, and now Fair, Fair over Clarity. Harold Fair Jr. around the outside of the 71, up to the third spot. Clarity falls back to fourth. Fifth is going to be the 24 of Tyler Rorick. Then the 41, Brent Jack, your second fast qualifier. The young man with very little experience in the Outlaw Late Models, Hunter Jack, he is showing the talent underneath the hood as he starts to pull away from veteran Scott Hans. Hans holds off Fair, but Fair going to look to the inside. Harold Fair, the Royal Truck and Sales, number 71, trying to make a line around the number 72. Fair looking high, looking low, trying to figure out a way around Hans for that second spot. Dive bombs to the bottom, falls back in line. Nothing doing down the back stretch. Our fast qualifier, Cactus Jack Landis, gonna look over Van Dyke. Landis all over Van Dyke, trying to make a move up. Door to door, wheel to wheel, bumper to bumper as they sort it out. Meanwhile, Jeff Gannis now to the inside of the 25 of J.R. Rorig. Side by side coming out of turn four. The doctor trying to make a line around the jack attack with the comet to the inside. 
Everybody trying to make some moves happen here early on. But Hunter Jack still the most impressive story of the evening as he is leading laps in an outlaw late model in front of the Perry family. The 41H young Hunter Jack running the race of his life. Half a straightaway lead over the 72 of Scott Hans. Harold Fair now to the inside, coming out of two down the back stretch. We, ha we haven't talked about him a lot, but running right there quietly and fit, that's the Rocket, Tyler Rorick, the comeback kid, trying to make his line around. He'd love to win a big race right here, but Harold Fair, Kyle, he's got the inside lane. Fair drops down to the bottom, going through turns three and four, almost makes contact, falls back in line down the front stretch. Hans holds on to second for just a little while longer. Fair gonna fight back down the back stretch. Fair gonna cool the tires just a little bit. Think about his next move, and he's gonna set up the hurricane and set the storm on fire as Harold Fair trying his best to get a line around him. Clarity waiting in the wings, hoping something happens so he can move the KT. Look out, contact up. between the five of Jeff Gannis, the 25, J.R. Rorig. Rorig gets out of shape, keeps it together, loses a couple positions as Landis now looks to the inside. The doctor may have something wrong if you see him kind of all over the place. Super Jack Landis trying to make a line up and around him. Year leader, the 41H of Hunter Jack working around the 33. Steve Reed, Reed drops it to the infield. Tough break for him. Absolutely, you're looking at your Indiana driver out of this one early on. But Hunter Jack continues to be the story of the night. He's out front, he's at large, he's in charge, and he's on a Sunday cruise here, making it look easy with the veteran racers. Cactus Jack Landis to the inside of J.R. Rorig. A little further back in the pack as they're battling side by side through turns one and two. Your fast qualifier, Landis on the bottom. Rorig trying to build up the momentum on the high side. The Wee Hop Everage Auto number 101. Quietly just making some laps, getting a feel for the car. Craig Everage, no stranger to the Angola Motorsports Speedway. He's got a lot of laps around here. Gonna take his time and see if he can sneak his way to the front or maybe he'll just wee hop it all the way there. Meanwhile, Harold Fair Jr. once again, look into the inside of Scott Hans, falls back in line down the front stretch. Jr. trying to figure out a way around the 72 as he drops to the bottom out of turn two. You know this track, Kyle, is a very big track on brakes. Race man, if you take a look there at the number nine, Watch him as he goes into turn three. Check out the left front. It's a nice, pretty day glow orange. He's using a lot of brake here on the outside. Parr trying to make the number nine stick to the front. Still a lot of laps left in this one. Early to be wearing on the brakes that hard. Parr could be in trouble later on as he tries to work around the 31 machine. Hunter Jack now gonna put the toe. Charlie Hanna a lap down. Trey Dubel and Hanna fighting for a spot deep in the field. That is only going to help Hunter Jack as Hans and Fair have to fight around laps now. Hans right onto the bumper of Dubal. Gotta give him a love tap saying he's here. Everybody trying to sort it out. Dubal not giving an inch. Hans gonna dive to the inside, makes a little bit of contact. Holy son of a monkey, Dubal able to keep it clean and green. Hans now goes around the outside of Dubal. He's gonna bring the 71, Harold Fair Jr. around the outside with him. Battling for the second and third spot. Meanwhile, clear sailing for your leader, the 41H, a Hunter Jack. Gannis now looks to the inside of your second fast qualifier, the 41 of Brent Jack as they're working their way Around the two machine, a Charlie Horn. Hannah. Hunter Jack still out front at large and in charge. Hans to second, Fair to third. Clarity to fourth, Rory to fifth. Jack to sixth. Gainis to seventh, eighth to Perry, ninth to Rory, tenth to Landis, and eleventh to Everett. Twelfth to Van Dyke, thirteenth to Parr, fourteenth to Bozell, fifteenth to Lane. 16th the Lee, 17th the Nestor, 18th the Stay Hour.
Year leader, the 41H. Hunter Jack now closing in on the 95 of Steve Stacy. As Stacy goes around the inside of Stehauer, that forces Jack way up top. They're four wide. Hunter Jack getting hung up behind the 33 of Stehauer. New leader, the 72 of Scott Hands. Jack with nowhere to go. They went four wide. The outlaw late models. Here comes Roaring. They're going to start piling them up two by two. Three wide down the front straightaway. Three wide going into turn one. The 33, Dave Stehauer. All sorts of off the pace falling back. Meanwhile, the number 24 machine of Tyler Rorig working around the outside, the seven of Clarity. Clarity and Jack make a little bit of contact, make a little bit more contact. Watch that pack of cars. Everybody trying to make some moves, roaring to the inside of Newble. Still trading a little bit of paint. They're doing it bumper car style here in the Outlaw Late Models. But everybody able to hold on, keeping it clean and green. Here comes Landis. Look at the front brakes. A lot of cars starting to show the glowing rotors as they're going around this 3 8 mile racetrack. Brake fade becoming an issue. See them sliding up, going into the corners. Your leader continues to be the 72 of Scott Hans. Hans is going to hold off fair and Jack. Tough break for Hunter. Nowhere to go early on. Got slid up. The Rocket Roaring trying to reel them all in. The Constantine coming in the mix. Clarity, Jack Landis, Roaring, and Embridge, all right there in the mix as well. Perry trying to work the high line for the Godfather. The 331, Trey Dubel trying to slide down in front of the seven of Justin Clarity. Clarity letting them know that's not going to fly. Dubel a lap down, Clarity fighting on the lead lap. Dubo really holding some guys up. Eric Lee, Eric Lee headed to the pits in the number five. As your leader continues to be the 72, Scott Hans, Fair, Fair Jr. running second, Hunter Jack third, fourth, the 24 of Tyler Rorick, fifth, the five, Jeff Gain is sixth, the seven of Justin Clardy. Then it's the 41, Brent Jack, the 10, Jack Landis. Field kind of breaking up into small groups right now. You see Brian Nestor going to go a lap down on lap number 40. 40 down, 70 laps to go for Hans and Fair. Hunter, Jack, and Rorick. Gainus, Clarity, Jack, Landis, Rorick, and Everett, your top 10. Lots and lots of traffic now in front of your leaders. They're two and three wide in front of your leaders coming out of turn four. Hang on. Lap traffic will play a role in this one. Mr. 12 time, Andy Bozell about to go a lap down with Lane alongside. Things are about to get very exciting. These guys racing in the back for for places are not going to just pull over Kyle and let anybody go. Whoa, Van Dyke up the track right down in front of Lane. Everybody checks up, able to get through. That's right in front of your leader, the 72. Of oh, Scott Hans is now they're side by side in front of him. Hans is going to drop down to the inside. Tyler Roaring has caught Hunter Jack. Keep an eye on Roaring. He's going to try and work around the 41H of Jack. Jack slides up the track. He leaves the inside wide open. Roaring tries getting in there, not able to do it. Lap traffic really coming into play as everybody works around Hannah and Lane. Harold. Wheel to wheel, door to door. Harold Fair trying to figure out a way around the 72 of Scott Hans as Hans trying to figure out a way around everybody in front of him. Watch for a possible three wide situation. Everybody getting antsy, no one wanting to wait. Here comes Roaring. Roaring to the inside. Hunter Jack not quite giving up. Kyle Death shaping up to be quite a race for third. Hunter Jack on the outside, running behind the two of Charlie Hanna. Meanwhile, the 24, Lee Van Dyke in front of Rorick. Looks like Rorick gonna be able to get around this age of Jack. Hunter Jack, a little impatient, gonna slice and dice. Battle up front for the lead, battle for the lead. The 31, Jeff Lane getting a little love tap from the 72 of Hans. That's gonna let the 71, Harold Fair Jr. by lead change.
Keep your eyes on the rocket. He started deeper in the field. He's up to third. Hunter Jack on the high line, nowhere to go. And here comes the constant team coming, looking for more. Keep your eyes on the Landrum Springs Rocket Chassis 24 car. He's slowly but surely reeling in your lead pack. That's right, the Black 24 machine. Tyler Rorick starting to reel in your top two cars. Meanwhile, Jeff Gann is now trying to figure out a way around the 41 of Hunter Jack. Harold Fair Jr., your race leader. Scott Hance glued to his back bumpers. They go around the 16 of Andrew Bozell. Andy Bozell, Mr. 12 time. Not often you see him go a lap down, but you just saw it. Rorick now gonna work onto the outside lane of the Bobby Blunt owned number 16 machine. Rorick trying to catch up. See if Bozell gives the room. He does. He's gonna let Rorick pull outside and let him go. Hands right back on the back bumper affair. I don't think this one is over quite yet. Jeff Gannis drops it to the inside of Hunter Jack a little further back. Scott Hans to the inside of Fair for the lead. Hans trying to set him up. Lap traffic costing the lead. Can lap traffic give it back to him? Parr about to go a lap down, see how they choose to get around him. Hans still looking to the inside, thinking about a three wide possibly. Hanson Fair both getting sideways, coming up off the corner each lap as they try to get around the nine of Jeff Parr. Fair gonna look to the outside of Parr. Hans gonna fall in line behind him. Parr not making it easy for him, and Rory is pretty happy about it, as this is only allowing him a chance to catch in. Parr slides up almost into the inside of 71. Woo, Fair able to keep it clean and green. 72 of Hans had to lift off the throttle a little bit. That gets a 71. Harold Fair Jr., a little bit of breathing room as Hans still working around the outside of the nine of Jeff Parr. Parr a lap down. Further back in the field, the Constantine Comet goes to the inside of Hunter Jack. That's the battle for fourth and fifth. Gainis now going to take fourth, put Hunter Jack to P5. Jeff Parr with a bonsai move through turns three and four, just about collecting your second place car, the 72 of Scott Hans. A lot of racy competitors here tonight going side by side, trying to find a line around each other. Lap traffic heavily into play, definitely mixing things up. Here comes the Rorick Tyler. Rorick, the Rorick Rocket, trying to work his way up in the 24 machine yet again. Rorick currently running in the third spot. Fourth now, the five of Jeff Gannis. Fifth, the 41, Hunter Jack. Your leader continues to be the number 71 machine. Harold Fair Jr., Scott Hans, second. As J.R. Rorick now trying to figure out a way around the nine apart. Tyler Rorig around the nine apart. 331 Dubal gonna go another lap down off the nose of the 71 affair. Hans starting to fall back. Rorig now losing a lot of ground to your lead pack as Pa right there trying to keep up with everybody else. 64 laps in, handling starting to go away on some of these race cars, seeing them get very, very dicey. Going to be 65 in the books, 45 to go this time by, 45 laps to go. A lot of racing room. So far, it has been clean and green. The driver's really doing a great job as we have veterans to rookies in the mix. Your leader, the 71, Harold Fair Jr., almost within a straightaway of your fast qualifier, the 10 of Jack Landis. Definitely, Clarity trying to work his way up around some lap traffic. Perry is in the mix. Perry about to go a lap down. Clarity also in danger of losing a lap to your leader. Tyler Rorick still trying to get around the nine machine of Jeff Parr. Rorick currently running in the third spot. Parr a lap down. Now the 331, Trey Dubel in the mix as well as heavy traffic in front of your leaders. They're side by side. Lap traffic and these cars are the faster cars. Oh, here we go, a little bit of contact. Hans gotta move fair. We're looking at three wide fair 
Meyer thinks better of it. Hannah right in the mix in the way. Like I said earlier, Kyle, Hans lost it in lap traffic, and he got it back in the same lap traffic. Scott Hans timing it just right. Now your race leader in the 72. Harold Fair Jr. got some ground to cover to try to get back around him as they're on the back bumper, the 10 of Bud Perry. Perry about to go a lap down. Perry slides up, hands to the inside. Perry giving plenty of room. Fair gonna try and follow suit. Perry trying to hold on and get his lap back, see if Fair can get up there. Here comes Fair to the inside. He'll make short work of the number 10 machine. Hans starting to pull away, but Fair gonna close the gap. Oh, he almost got into the back bumper. Keep your eyes on Fair. I think he's got no love lost with the number 72. Scott Hans now with a little bit of breathing room between him and the 71 of Fair. Fair had to check up that last corner, keep from plowing into the back end of Hans. But still, heavy, heavy traffic in front of him. This one's not over yet. Meanwhile, the 24, Tyler Rorick, now starting to work around the 10 of Bud Perry. Gain is now starting to close the gap as well. Rorick right there in the mix. Clarity and Nestor about to be lap traffic. Hans thinking about splitting him right now in the middle. Thinks better of it. Now gonna try and get to the inside. Hans with a little tap, letting the 11 of Brian Nestor know he's there. Nestor gives him room, lets him and Harold Fair Jr. by. Now the seven of Justin Clarity gonna look to the inside of Nestor. They're battling for position. Tough break for Rorick, nowhere to go with lap traffic all over him. This is just going to allow your lead pack to get away. Look at that, Harold Fair looking really flirty on the top shelf, trying to make a line around him. Fair trying to get around the 72 of Hans, doing it the hard way. Not able to do it, but Steve Stacy might help out. Here comes Harold Fair, Fair to the high line yet again. Scott Hans having to really roll the car up in the center of the corner. Fair a lot smoother through the center, looks to the inside. Now they're gonna rake around the 95 of Stacy. Stacy getting the move over signal, not really giving him any room. Scott Hans, Harold Fair Jr. able to work around the 95 of Stacy. Fair now to the outside of Hans. Side by side going into turn one. Harold Fair Jr. drifts it way up, loses a bunch of ground. Falls back to second. Three wide overlap traffic. Gain is trying to get up there as quick as possible. Making a great move for three wide down the back straight away. Wow, Gain is trying to reel him in. Meanwhile, the 24 of Tyler Rorick is there. He has cleared the lap cars and now reeling in the 71 of Harold Fair Jr. Slight bit of brake glow from the 24 machine. As Harold Fair Jr. once again peek into the outside of Scott Hans for the top spot. Fair all over him now to the inside. Rorick has closed the gap while the front two hash it out. About to be a three car party on this one. Harold Fair tries high, tries low, tried down the middle. Cannot make it work. Here comes Tyler Rorick. Can Rorick add to the excitement we've already seen? He's all over him, fair to the outside. Scott Hans trying to make that car as wide as possible. High, low, doing everything he can to hold off the 71 of Harold Fair Jr. Tyler Rorick now to the inside for a second. Tyler Rorick, the Rorick Rocket, gonna put it to the inside. Keep your eyes on the 24 machine. Now he gets a little bit of a run back to the inside. Here comes Fair, Fair feeling the pressure, trying to work the highlight. Rorick in the low line, Hans thinking I gotta go. Hans able to get a little bit of distance on him that time around. Rorick on the bottom, Harold Fair Jr. on the outside, still side by side battling for second. But Rorick is second, Fair to third. Here comes Rorick, Rorick to the inside of Hans. Rorick with the momentum, almost three wide out of turn number four. Scott Hans with his hands full in the 72, trying to hold back both the 24, Tyler Rorick, the 71, a Harold Fair Jr. 
Junior not going to give up on the high side. Still battling it out three wide out of turn four. Kyle, we've seen the, the lead change hands multiple times in lap traffic. And here comes a big pack. Fair now going to slide off. Roaring to the inside. Put Tyler Roaring to the lead. Tyler dive bombs to the inside and takes the lead. Here comes Hans. Hans wants it back. Fair going to get in the mix to the inside as well. Harold Fair beats to the inside of Scott Hans for his second. Falls back in line, now going to jump to the outside. Meanwhile, your leader of the 24, Tyler Rorick. Rorick able to use the 31 of Jeff Lane to his advantage as he went a lap down. Tyler Rorick starts to check out, but Fair is not giving up. He's still got a dog in the fight. He's gonna give a bump and run, gets Hans a little bit loose. Here comes Fair. Fair to the inside, he gets loose out of two. Can't make it stick. Harold Fair Jr. now falls in line behind the 72 of Scott Hans. Hans trying to hang on to second. As there's lap traffic now in front of your leader, the 24 of Tyler Rorick. Rorick looking to put the 101 Craig Everidge in your second fast qualifier, the 41 of Brent Jackal, lap down. Average and Jack battling for position. Rorick looking to the outside of Average. Meanwhile, Hare Fair Jr. to the inside of Hans for second. Laps winding down quickly for the Rocket. What a story this could be. One of the races he has yet to win in his young career is the Stan Perry Memorial. One year ago, he didn't think he could walk, let alone drive a race car, and now he's leading the Stan Perry Memorial. Tyler Rorick now looking to get around the 41 of Brent Jack. Jack about to go a lap down your second fast qualifier. Meanwhile, Harold Fair Jr. still flirting with the 72 of Scott Hans, looking to the outside. Hans now looks to the outside of Everidge as Everidge is a lap down. The five of Jeff Gann is now on the back bumper. The 71 of Harold Fair Jr. Three-way battle for second. Next time by, we're gonna have 10 laps to go, Kyle. 10 short laps around the Angola Motorsports Speedway. Can Rorick hold on, hands there. And Gainis, Gainis now gonna get in the mix. He's gonna look, no, oh, we've got contact! Right in front of Gainis. I knew it was coming. These two guys have traded paint for laps. Finally, enough was enough. Something had to give. Holy smokes, there it is. Wow, our first caution. Kyle, I tell you what. There's not many times in your career you get to call a race with this much action. Race fans, what do you think? Are you enjoying the Stan Perry? 98 laps, green flag racing with 22 outlaw super lane models. Let's make some noise for these drivers. You see Hans still showing a little bit of disgust to the 71 affair. Two veteran racers not going to give each other an inch. White flag has been displayed. We'll be racing next time. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I don't think we're going to go green this time. No, you see Hauser not liking it at all. Just kind of dangling it out there. And everybody checking up the 10. Bud Perry looping it, trying to avoid all the cars stacking up out of turn two. 14 great cars remain at that. Hunter Jack was told repeatedly on one-way communication to go around the caution cars. He did not do so. So we're going to start him where he's at. He'll start seven. Rorick with the lane option, chose the high line. Will it come back to haunt him? Gainis gonna give him a little bit of room. We're back to green flag racing. Jeff Gainis, not sure if the car is just not handling right or what, but something not right. Here comes the doctor, J.R. Rorick, the father of your leader, working on P3. Caution, flag is out again. Not sure what happened. The 10, Bud Perry facing the wrong way. The top of turns one and two. Looks like he's just gonna pull it into the pits. Meanwhile, the 331, Trey Dubel rejoins the field. Well, white flag has been displayed. We're about to find out as Warrig and Gainis 
Landis and Rorick bring them out of turn four. Here we go, they're just about three wide. Definitely a handling issue. You saw the five car every which way but loose. Here comes the good doctor, Dr. Rorick, trying to follow his son, the Rocket. Gainis now has the car straightened out. They're gonna go side by side. They touch a little bit, keep it clean and green. Possible tight condition on that five machine. Watch him using that apron to try to turn the race car. If he misses it just wrong, slides up the racetrack. Watch him out of turn four. Able to keep it down. He'll fall in line in second. Meanwhile, Jack Landis now to the inside of Scott Hans. Ten laps to go, make it nine at the stripe. Hans on a mission. He might have taken two fresh tires from the impound. We'll have to keep an eye on him as now he's going to dive bomb. Cuts across the nose and tries to get under the good doctor. Hands up to fourth, looks to the inside of Rorick for third, side by side, drifts up, very close out of turn four, still side by side into turn one. Hands driving like he's on a mission. I think we got about seven or so laps to go in this one. Hands trying everything, the good doctor trying to hold him down, pinch his line off. Five laps to go. Five to go for the 24 of Tyler Rorick. Seven laps to go. <laughs> Roaring starting to pull away from Gainus, Hans, Roaring, and Landis. Your front five. Five now to go, five to go this time by. Flipper tells me five laps to go. Scott Hans now looking to the outside of Jeff Gaines, drops it down to the bottom, looking to the inside for the second spot. Now back to the outside, going into turn one. Hans all over, trying to get around the five of Gaines. Tyler Roaring with a clear straightaway in the 24 machine. Scott Hans drops down to the bottom to the inside of Gaines for second. to go for the 24, Tyler Roaring, Scott Hans doing everything he can, trying to get around the five of Gaines. Hans now jumps to the outside as a white flag out. One lap to go for the 24, Tyler Roaring. Scott Hans once again looking to the outside, now gonna drop it down to the bottom, down the back stretch. Meanwhile, out of turn four, checkered flag out. Your winner of the 24, Tyler Rorick. Jeff Gannis second, Scott Hans third. J.R. Rorick fourth, and Jack Lane is going to round out your top five. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise. 110 laps. Yeah, I'm gonna turn things over to my good friend, Tony Eldridge, down there on the front stretch. Tony, it's all yours, man. What an exciting race. Race fans, you got more than you bargained for. You got more than you bargained for here tonight. One of the best races I've ever seen at the Angola Motorsport Speedway. The helmet's off, he's got a huge smile on his face. How about it for the Rocket, Tyler Roarig! Coming up and out of the car, the crew coming over to see him. Here he is, race fans, Tyler Roarig! Tyler talking to car owner, getting a little bit of water here. Very, very excited young man. Crew down here excited as well. I think this is what you came for. You get your name on the big trophy. You get a huge trophy to take home with you. During that red flag, I had a chance to share your story with you. A year ago, you were unsure if you'd ever walk, let alone drive a race car. You went back to Anderson, you climbed in a sprint car, and you showed the track who's boss. This was one you had not yet won. You've won everything else under the sun. 
It's got to feel good, my friend, to be in victory lane in front of a stellar crowd like this. I, I can't believe it. You know, this whole week, I wasn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't real sure. You know, I've never ran good here in the past, but, you know, this is a great race for a great family and uh, great fans, too. I appreciate everyone coming out. And, uh, boy, I don't know what to say. This, this car's won race in two races and, and pretty much dominated both of them. And uh, I couldn't be more proud of my crew and my sponsors and just my family here. First Choice Auto Body, Cantor Built, uh, Schneider Auto Sales, Mobile Tech. Ton of great supporters. And, uh, man, I never thought I'd win this race, really. <laughs> You know, a year ago, man, you were laid up in a hospital bed. You're a fighter. You're one of those guys who never give up. You give inspiration to everyone going through pain and struggles. What's it like to climb back in a race car, to go back to Anderson where it all happened and, and climb back in a sprint car nonetheless? Well, I mean, it's a privilege to race, you know, and like what happened last year really made me realize that. And I'm just, I'm thankful to be here, really. Thankful for all the fans that come out. Just everyone that showed up tonight, I, I couldn't be more proud of everyone. Tyler, I know you want to celebrate with your family. It's an honor to have this interview. One more time for my buddy, Mr. Tyler Rorick. Claims one for the Perry team, a race he has always wanted to win. Very exciting.